Three Act Math is an incredible tool for unlocking student curiosity, and the philosophy behind it will extend throughout our time together in this workshop. How can we use this lesson format? I believe the best way to begin is by experiencing a Three Act lesson as a student. So put on your student hat and let's begin. I want you to think about two questions right now. What do you notice and what do you wonder? Pause the video to take a moment to write down a few things. I'll continue in seven seconds. If we were in person right now, I'd give the audience 30 seconds of silent think time. Then I'd have everyone share with their group some things they notice and wonder for about a minute. Then I'd ask a few volunteers to share what they said or something they heard in their group. Any volunteers are welcome and it's okay to call on random students at this time. It's possible you or other audience members notice there are 10 cups next to me. Maybe you notice the 10 cups seem to be about one foot tall. Maybe you noticed I have a green shirt on. It's possible you wondered how tall I am, how tall each cup is, and maybe if I'm going to continue to stack the cups the same way. It's helpful to write all of these student responses down in a T-chart on the board. Even silly responses are welcome at this point because the goal is to get students involved in the lesson. In addition, writing responses down validates student thinking and it helps students feel more welcome in the classroom. After the notice and wonder phase, I then jump straight to the main question we'll explore in our lesson today. How many cups will it take to be as tall as me? Pause the video again and write down a guess. Next, I'd ask volunteers to share their guesses with the class. I love this because any student can share a guess. It doesn't matter if you have high or low math confidence because taking a guess is a very low risk. You'll be happy to see students who usually prefer not to participate start to get involved during the guess portion of the lesson. Kids are curious. After hearing some guesses, I then ask students to silently think about the following question. What information do we need to know in order to solve this problem? Pause the video again and write down a few things. After students have about 30 seconds to think, I have them share with a shoulder partner or their group for one minute. Then we share out as a class and I write the responses on the board for students to see. Maybe you said we need to know how tall I am. Maybe you think we need to know how tall one cup is and maybe how tall five cups are. Once we feel good about what's written, it's time to reveal some information. For this activity, I actually pass out a stack of seven cups or so to each group in the room. In addition, each group receives a few rulers to measure the cups. The only information I actually give students myself is my height. But since we're virtual right now, here are some key measurements. Now that you have the needed information, pause the video again and work out the problem to try to find the solution to how many cups it will take to stack as tall as me. In a later section of our workshop, I'll go into detail about what I do while students are working but here's a very quick breakdown. As groups work, I circulate the room looking for a few things. One, are any groups getting completely stuck and not able to move forward without intervention? Two, are students staying on task? And three, I'm also taking note of the different strategies groups are using because I'm going to have at least one or two groups present their work in front of the class. Once most students are finished, I then have groups come up to the front of the room and present their work. At this point, there's a really great tip I learned from Jeff Crawl's blog. Instead of me asking all of the questions to guide the presentation, I instead pass out questions I want to ask on sticky notes, and I have students ask the questions for me. This is really helpful for getting the audience engaged in presentations, because we all know that can be challenging at times. Finally, after having some groups present their work and facilitating discussion, I then reveal the answer for the class. In this lesson, I'd actually have students come stack cups and count them for me. That's 89 cups, y'all.
Well, there you have it. You just completed a three-act math lesson as a student. How's it feel? Before you go, I do have an assignment for you. Here are the three acts of a math task once again. Think back to the lesson we just completed. Can you remember what Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3 were? Write down your answers and check your work on our workshop webpage.